entire world is gathering in the morning to talk about ethos. And ethos <clears throat> is, say you look at the Creative Mornings Manifesto, giving a damn. That's one of the ethos of Creative Mornings. The fact that everybody is created. It's this archetype of communities when they come together, of cultures when they co come together. Like what is the moral compass of your community? That's what ethos is. And for today, we have an amazing speaker. And I want to read a few things that <clears throat> Daniela is a part of. Dan Daniela has lived along the U.S. border for most of her life. And you just, if you're going to talk about San Diego, you got to talk about how this is Mexico for me. That's what I grew up as it was. And that's the history and knowledge that... Um, that Yeah, make some noise for that. <clears throat> this is also indigenous land, and you can't move forward without respecting the land that you're on and appreciating it. <clears throat> Her childhood was spent in Mexicali. She moved from San Diego to San Diego when she was 11 years old. She has over 20 years of experience in the nonprofit sector. Uh, her professional experience began in the Institute of Americas, where she organized a series of programs and international conferences uh, on raising awareness for environment, freedom of speech, community, empowerment, and excellence in science. Right now, she is the executive director of the Sherman Heights Community Center. And without further ado, <clears throat> show some love, make some noise for Daniela Kelly. Hola, muy buenos días. Good morning, everyone. Buenos días a todos y a todas. I would like to say thank you to Romel and thank you to the Creative Morning Teams for inviting me to speak here today. My name is Daniela Kelly, and I'm the Executive Director of the Sherman Heights Community Center, which is located within walking distance just a few blocks from where we are today from this beautiful building. I'm here also to tell you that soon, next week, we will be honoring and remembering our loved ones who have passed away. The altars and the ofrendas at the community center and throughout the neighborhood will be blessed. And our procession with the Centro Cultural de la Raza will be coming from Balboa Park all the way to Sherman Heights. So next week, Wednesday, FYI. The Day of the Dead celebration that is coming up is really important to us and, our to, and to our community. It is one of the many events and services we offer at the community center. But this event is just so dear to the heart of the community and to the heart of the center, of course. It is a time-honored and beloved tradition. It is also a complex in the sense that it ties generations together, like it ties memory, and people to place. You know, the ofrendas, the dances, and the songs that are used in this event are very ancient. They're rooted in a millenary cultural practice. They have a direct connection with our ancient past, and at the same time, they are as modern and contemporary as lowriders and loteria here in Sherman Heights in San Diego. But what I want to emphasize today is the importance of place and the importance of culture. I want to talk to you really about how these two things have been so important to me. In thinking about today, I had to reflect back on how in place and space have shaped me. And I ask you how these ideas also shape your sense of being, and your sense of well-being. Culture and space are so important that they might even influence the way you dream. I want you to remember that. Because in my life, for me, for Daniela, place and culture have shaped me, how I understand the world, and how I live in the world around me. September 1984, Mexicali crossing into Calexico starting second grade, Rockwood Elementary. I sit in the car, waiting, doing my homework, listening to the radio, 
looking out the window. I see the street vendors around us selling everything from burritos to plaster monkeys, to plaster sculptures of monkeys on surfboards. I see young kids less fortunate than I that have to work instead of going to school. I see lovers kissing at the park before they leave to work and I stare at them out of the corner of my eye. I begin to feel the stress of reaching the customs agent who will ask me about my nationality, maybe even quiz me on what monkey bars are or who was the first president of the United States of America. I know that if we are sent to secondary inspection by the agent, I will be late to school and my mom will be late to work yet again. As a child, I see the differences in the landscape, in the geography, and in the culture between these two countries. As a child, I don't understand the contradictions of the border, but I could move seamlessly between these two cultures, between these two countries. At some times, those contradictions appear in simple things like child's play. I would ask myself, why, why are saladitos and churritos, the spicy ones, and my personal favorite, and fruit smothered with lime and chile, a delicacy among my friends in Mexicali, and thought of as gross and weird by my friends in Calexico. I didn't understand why Pancho Villa, a national hero in Mexico, who was often portrayed in posters and corridos and studied at great length in the history books, reduced to a short paragraph about a Mexican bandito in my seventh grade book. I was challenged by what I saw and experienced, and I even rebelled against it. Like the time I refused to sing Jingle Bells in the school's Christmas party because I was shy about my accent, only to find myself having to spend the entire recess in the classroom writing the lyrics to Jingle Bells on the blackboard. These little things that happen to me on a day-to-day -day basis are very personal. They exemplify how lucky I have to have grown up learning two codes, two cultures, two value systems, two histories, two languages, and as a result, I exist in a third space. Because if you grew up along the border, you know that there is Mexico, there's the US, and this third space that straddles between both countries, where you are bilingual, you're bicultural, and you're binational. There are so many possibilities, so many, can you imagine? Here along the border, in this space among cultures. That child that crossed the border would later reflect on and study these micro occurrences at a macro level at UC San Diego, where I studied and learned about the relationship between economics and literature and international relations and art. At UC San Diego, I had the opportunity to understand those contradictions from an early childhood. Fun fact quiz. Brownie points to anyone in the audience who can tell me the direct connection between this beautiful building, the downtown San Diego Library, and the Sherman Heights Community Center. To the winner, come to the Community Center and you'll get a complimentary hello. <laughs> I'll give you a few seconds. Yes. They do. So I'll see you at the Sherman Heights Community Center. <laughs> exactly. Both buildings were designed by local architect Rob Quigley. Both are spaces that bring together people, community, like today and this morning right here. If you pass by the Sherman Heights Community Center, 
you will see this beautiful mural by Jane C. Wheat of a folkloric dancer surrounded by images of activists and community figures. Inside, you will see the mosaic artwork of Raul Guerrero that shows us the beauty of the homes and the homegirls of Sherman Heights. If you walk along the sidewalk, you will see our newest mural that illustrates the different generations of community members that participate in our procession by artist Yvette Roman. You will see the large tree that gives us shade year round. You will see the quickly columns and the wooden beams. All these elements are integral to the center for its structure, its history, its beauty, but what you see there is a bit static. They are missing the dynamic element of life in the community. Sometimes in communion, sometimes in celebration. As you know, culture is dynamic. I like to think of the Sherman Heights Community Center as a loom. In Spanish, we call it a telar. A loom for weaving, a loom that brings together the different elements of community weaving them together with the thread of culture. It weaves together tradition, people, friendships, joy, community. And if you have been following Creative Mornings discussions and topics, it reminds me of the ethos, the alchemy, all happening at once. In this loom, the movement is created by the abuelitas in the sound of their cane as they come to play Loteria. In this movement, it is a movement created by the Zumba hard, diehard fans dancing cumbias in the early morning and sweating. In this loom, the movement is a celebration of a quinceañera in our saloncito. The movement of this loom also brings back the memories of our deceased loved ones in this loom, we create a tapestry, this tapestry of a community thriving, the intergenerational connections between the elders and the youngest. Hence, my emphasis on the importance of space, place, and culture working together. Can you see the importance? How does place and culture affect you and shape you? The Sherman Heights Community Center was founded in 1984. That same year, I was a second grader crossing the border to go to school. 10 years later, later the Day of the Dead celebration began in 1994 at the community center when Senor Sandoval, a Sherman resident originally from Oaxaca, approached the community center asking for a place to build an ofrenda. Like Senor Sandoval, many community residents were uprooted from their place of origin and had grown up observing Dia de los Muertos. They would visit their local cemeteries and decorate the graves of their loved ones and had the opportunity to be in communion with their ancestors. In San Diego, without easy access to the graveyards of their loved ones, Residents like Senor Sandoval found in the Sherman Heights Community Center a place to continue this cultural practice in a communal setting. Each year, the number of families involved has grown, and so have the ofrendas. We are cognizant that these ofrendas are different from the ones in Mexico, but the ethos of the celebration is the same. Migrant families from Central America began to make ofrendas for their family members. Rosa Parks was honored the year she passed. So were Japanese American and Jewish families that once lived in Sherman Heights. If you remember, the Japanese were interned at Manzanar during World War II. Ofrendas were created in honor of pop culture icons like Michael Jackson and Selena. Each year, we have an ofrenda honoring the many lives of people lost along the U.S.-Mexican border. There's also one 
dedicated to all the homeboys and homegirls of Barrio Sherman. When we say that this event is so close, so dear to the heart of the community, it is because it allows us to celebrate life even in the passing of others. This year, we honor the lives of Senor Dustano Gomez and Ms. Vicky Mendegray, two of the community center's founders and pivotal figures in the community who dedicated so much of their life to making this community center possible. In Mesoamerica, or Mesoamericans believe they lived in the four directions of the earthly plane, east being the most important and where the sun rises, the west, the north, and the south. They also believed and lived in a vertical center axis in the center place where the underworld, Mictlan, in the, was below in the celestial world above. And I, I like to believe that the center, the Sherman Heights Community Center, is this axis that comes alive with the community and its spirits of culture. Thank you.